What's up, guys? The Letter for the King is loosely based off of a children's book originally titled Der Brief vor der König by the Dutch writer Tonke Dracht. So this story has been around almost as long as The Lord of the Rings. But when we say that this show is loosely based off of the book, we mean loosely, very loosely. For all intents and purposes, the show and the book are two entirely different animals. This is the first of four videos, and it's going to have major spoilers for season one of Netflix's adaptation, The Letter for the King. Let the games begin! Here are three things that you may have missed, but real quick, let's highlight some fun facts about the casting. Do you recognize this guy? Smeagol? Gollum? The legend himself, Andy Serkis. Andy played the mayor of Mistrana, and did you know... That Lavinia, his daughter in the show, is also his daughter in real life, Ruby Ashbourne Circus. That is why you're getting married. How cool is it that they got to share this experience together? <laughs> Very cool. Next up, Boars. My fellow Game of Thrones fans might recognize him as the friendly neighborhood Lem Lemon Cloak. The night is dark and full of terrors. Then we've got Sir Phantomar and Tiori. Played by Omid Jalili, excuse my pronunciation, and Amir Wilson. Both of these actors are in another great book and show series, His Dark Materials on HBO. And last but not least, The Abbot, played by Kim Bonya. Apparently, I live under a rock. Uh, I guess I already knew that. But it turns out, Kim Bonya is going to be showing up in season two of The Witcher as a very, very cool character. That's all I'll say for now. All right, let's do it. Three things that you may have missed in season one of The Letter for the King. Let's start with the elephant in the room. In case you missed it, the very last shot of the show. Look at that. The birds form the face of Prince Viridian. That's Prince Viridian, right? So the question is, is Prince Viridian actually gone? Or will he reappear in season two? Let me know in the comment section if you think he's going to reappear. And generally speaking, what do you think season two is going to entail? If I had to bet right now, I'd say that Lavinia and Thierry, they're going to be searching for the Lost Road. The Lost Road through the mountains from Mistrana. And who knows, maybe they'll even find her mother. Speaking of these two, let's go back to the very first time they met for number two, this scene here. As you all know by now, the major season one surprise was that Lavinia was the one who had been leveraging the powers all along. And each time she did something, except for the very end, but the first few times that she did something, it involved a spiral, right? A spiral of wind here that threw people back. A spiral of fire here. A spiral of wind here. Pretty romantic. And again, a huge spiral of wind here. This one was badass. So let's go back to that very first scene with Lavinia and Tiori. And look at what she's doing with her foot. This is from episode two. So it's a very early clue to the powers residing within her. This clue only becomes obvious upon a rewatch, but now you know. And number three is the same thing. It becomes obvious on a rewatch. The second time that she used her spiral power thingy was when she saved Turi from Slooper. Lavinia unknowingly controlled the fire and prevented Turi from being burned. At this time, neither she nor Turi realized that she was the one doing it. They both thought that Turi had the power. Prince Viridian thought that Tyrion was on the power as well. But guess who realized the truth right away? Slooper. Watch his reaction right here. So yeah, upon a rewatch, it's pretty clear. Slooper knew the truth before us, before Prince Viridian, before Tyrion, and before Lavinia herself. He didn't know for long, though. Alright, that's the first of the four videos in this story. Three more to come.